well today is Monday Easter Monday but we are working and it's a 7 to 5 30 the sign on our door there so I'm not sure how long I am supposed to be there but and today was the first day you know I had my camera ready and I had a feeling that I would be driving the freight liner and sure enough I checked with dispatch and they give me uh, one delivery two pickups basically get loaded here with one machine delivered and then do two pickups on the way back and I say what is this pickup truck or a freight liner he says freight liner and I'm like yes so I go grab the keys uh, do a circle check walk around check the lights check oil and but then when I started in Mon uh, Friday Friday I also was uh, I think I started it I drove it a little bit I forgot but back then like yellow lights were on like there's two warning lights on the dash and then there's the deaf light is used to be on now it's now it's blinking but the worst thing is that there's a red light now you know right above the right above the two uh, yellow lights there's a red light and i go ask this uh, because you know this truck always has some kind of lights on so I go ask the lead driver, the guy who trained me, I said, hey, I got all kinds of lights in there. Can you take a look like, is it okay to drive? I don't want to get stranded, you know? And he goes to the truck and he sees that red light and right away he, he, turns, the, he turns the engine off. He says, you see, it says stop and I, <laughs> I didn't see a stop inside the red light, but it's it's one of those, you know, not check engine light, but something is something is terribly wrong. Okay, why do we have my cell phone is again all dead, like it's not talking to me. For some reason, as soon as I hook up this cable, it stops giving me verbal instructions. It was working fine before. Continue on Alberta to south for 12 kilometers. And. Uh, and so he sends me uh, to our mechanics. I, I talk to the mechanics. They say, oh, you know, the guy takes a look, but he says, we don't have any scanning software for these big trucks. He says, it has to be scheduled for service. So I go talk, he says, go tell dispatch that basically you cannot drive this truck. So I go back to dispatch. I say, I'm sorry, here's the situation. Uh, stop light means stop we cannot drive it and I gave him all my paperwork because all my all my delivery and pickups were oh I say it was like a small man lift the first one I said is it heavier than thousand pounds because maybe I can take it in a pickup truck because our, our tailgate is uh, is good for up to thousand pounds and the guy says no that one, even though it seems small, but it's still over a thousand pounds in weight. So you need a flat deck. You need a five ton truck for that one. And so he gave me new orders. So now I'm not picking up anything from our yard. So my job is just uh, do two pickups from customers. I think my first order is some kind of lights like mobile lights and then the next order I forgot what it is but something small something that can be done with a with a pickup truck and then the other guy who drives the other freight liner which is uh, much newer he'll have to do these machines that I was supposed to do so basically yeah that five ton will be very busy today because this one is broken but yeah, it's in the, I'm surprised that, you know, it has 200, what is it, 35, no, 260,000 kilometers. 
but it's a really in a really rough shape and I already complained to the manager about the mirrors right I said the mirrors are falling off you know they all shaking it's you cannot see anything you know if you're going over slightly bumpy road and he said that was the inside uh, it's not just the outside bolt it's the mirrors inside all loose and he said next time when it goes for service we'll try to see if they can uh, if there's any options to either fix these mirrors or replace them he says I don't know depending how expensive they are and I, I even told him I said just get regular you know manual mirrors so that I can adjust them at least manual ones they you know they're, they're not gonna be as as uh, as weak as these ones but yeah that truck is basically has been uh, beaten to death they probably didn't do a uh, proper maintenance on it so yeah wanted to show you guys the freight liner but not my lucky day so now we're driving my favorite for some reason you know even though I'm a Ram guy but Ford F-350 ladies and gentlemen oh by the way the other day I was watching a video about this because that guy remember that electrician he wants to buy one of these uh, to tow a fifth wheel RV uh, and I was telling him that maybe from what I've read everybody says a Ram 3500 with a Cummins V6 is more reliable than this one and then I watched a video for some reason I just I punched in a Ram 3500 versus Ford F350 into into uh, YouTube and there was an interesting video done by a mechanic so the guy who actually works on these trucks on semi trucks you know so the guy sounds like he knows what he's talking about and the video was about he said three reasons why uh, Cummins diesel is such a great engine compared to you know other heavy duty pickup trucks uh, engines and there was something about the way the cylinders are shaped and then that it's a v6 which is more balanced and then there was something else but basically the conclusion was that Cummins v6 uh, oh yeah it's more reliable and also it develops more torque at lower RPM like if you get that uh, high output uh, Cummins which here in Canada is uh, like you pay 9,000 for diesel and you pay 11,000 extra Canadian for uh, if you want high output uh, Cummins <coughs> but I think now they have a promotion where they give you 9,000 Yeah, they give you 9,000 discounts, so pretty much a, a regular diesel engine is free when you order uh, a new F, uh, a Ram 3500, but if you want that high output, that's 2,000 more. And so this guy was saying that, yeah, so this truck has like 1,000 torque at 1,000 RPM, you know? But I don't know, for some reason, when I'm driving, when I'm driving this Ford and compare it with the Ram, Ford seems to be more perky. And I really hate these uh, signals, you know, that don't fix. It's always push and then you have to push them back. They don't cancel. Like this is like, I don't know, 18th century design. I don't like these. I, I'm so used to, you know, you. I want three clicks, I push it slightly, right, then it stops. But if I want constant uh, thing, I push it harder, but then when you turn the wheel in the opposite direction, it cancels it. it, cancels it. So you don't have to worry about doing it manually. Here, you, you have to do everything, everything manually. But, the, I don't know, for some reason, the engine seems more powerful to me than even though that guy says that Cummins is supposed to be more powerful 
but I think, I suspect, this ram we have. Yeah, it probably has just the regular diesel engine, not high output. And this one is V8, right? So this one probably just has a bit more horsepower or torque compared to the Ram. Or maybe it just has the slower... Yeah, maybe it just has slower axle ratio, right? So that would do it as well. The slower axle ratio, the truck will pick up speed faster. But... And I was checking the new one. So the new one, a Ram 3500. Slight right onto the Memorial Drive West Ram, then merge onto Memorial Drive. You can order, you can go to the dealer and you can order from the factory for about $80,000. Of course, Canadian, but they also offer you a lease option. And I look at that, just played with some numbers. So if you give them $25,000 down, and you take Continue on Memorial Drive for two kilometers. And you take a three year lease, thirty-six months, then the payments are only four hundred a month. It's basically like if you do bi weekly it's like two hundred sixteen dollars or something. So like okay, four fifty. Four fifty a month for three years and you have the lease with a maximum of 24,000 kilometers a year. Which is interesting, you know, because you can get a super po super powerful truck with much more torque than a Hellcat and it's 80,000, not 110 or 120,000. But of course, yeah, right now I cannot afford anything, so now I'm just driving my Jeep for at least two more years and then we'll see what we're getting but these ones are just a joy to drive you know these humongous pickup truck except you got to be careful when you when you're backing and when you're turning because they're so long you know if i was buying one of these let's say i win a lottery and i want to get one of these i would get probably a ram 3500 high output But I would get a six foot bed. I, I don't want, like this one has a crew cab, an eight foot long bed. So it's like almost the length of this train. Use the right two lanes to take the 4th Avenue South ramp. You know, so that's too much for like, how do you park it? You know, it's, it's okay when it's a commercial vehicle, but. Meters, merge onto 4th Avenue Southeast West. But you know, for personal, personal needs, I think six foot bed is more than enough. Of course, not for a fifth wheel. If, if you plan to do some RVing with a fifth wheel, then they say that with a six foot bed, you might damage the trailer when you're turning. But I don't have any plans to buy these RVs. It just, you know, I just think these pickup trucks are a lot of fun. And they last, like I was talking to one guy, he said he had a high output Ram 3500, he uh, erect one million kilometers on it before he sold it. And he says the guy who bought it after one million kilometers, he's still driving it. So, you know, it's like the vehicle can be... In 600 meters, turn left onto 1st Street Southwest. So the vehicle can last you, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. On this one is the next one. Oh wait a second. So it says first street.
interesting, but it says turn left in 400 meters. Why are we not turning here? Oh, it's okay because I gotta go that way. here are so freaking narrow you know on this particular stretch so you gotta watch vehicles next to you turn left onto first street southwest in 400 meters turn right onto 8th avenue southwest actually wait it does cancel actually so my bad, yeah, so if you if you push it hard enough for the uh, long blinking function and then you turn the wheel, it does it does cancel it. Okay, where are we turning? Next one. See that's that's not the right way because eighth avenue, you cannot turn on the eighth avenue. This Google doesn't know what he's what what she's talking about. Like the next street is it's it's a pedestrian zone. Anyway, I gotta focus. Yeah, well, I never knew that you can <laughs> drive on here. Uh, this is uh, Steven Zell. Actually, this is a great area for some. Uh, street photography you know but i was behind this building and the guy says no 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 it's this restaurant over here you 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 have to go onto the onto the stevens app there's no other way and i said i thought there was no vehicles in here he says oh no just if there's a if there's a gate he says just open it and he was talking about this gate I cannot see like is there a light Fuck. the sun is just right in my face yeah I don't see a light so I guess I'll have to But anyway, so these were just some uh, mobile lights and I found the restaurant, the guy gave me the, I asked, I said, what's the name of the restaurant? So he gave me the name of the restaurant, I just backed right there to the front door and as you saw there was a pickup truck there and man, yeah this is one, one crazy area. Okay, sorry pedestrian, yeah I saw a white light for pedestrians to cross that means that there's a red light for the other guys right? So I'm smack in the, in the very downtown because you can, it cannot, it doesn't get any more downtown than Stevens, uh, Stevens Ave. But these buildings here are beautiful. Oh yeah, Stephen Avenue Place. See like, it's all restaurants here, but it's a very bad area to be uh, cruising around in a vehicle because usually there's huge traffic jams, there's no parking anywhere. And lots of pedestrians, so you'll be stuck at the intersection for 20 minutes, letting all of them go. finally we're getting out of here 
So now my job is, my second pickup is uh, something I dropped off. I dropped off last week. It was a small pallet jack. Continue on 6th Avenue Southwest for one and a half kilometers. And it was at the, um, at the University of, of Calgary. And I'm back on the same, like, what is this? Memorial? No, this uh, 4th Street, I think. I really hate this one because the lanes are so narrow. And there can be cars parked on because it's a one-way street. There can be cars parked on both sides on the shoulder, which makes it even more difficult for a professional driver like myself to navigate this huge pickup truck through the downtown. <laughs> no, I, I I can only imagine. Let's say if I had my K Whopper here with a tandem Jeep and three axle. Uh, RGN and then a tandem booster no I don't think you can I don't think you can make it you know around these corners with a 120 foot long rig but the sound of this engine is I love how this F-350 sounds Okay, now we're going where? Straight We're supposed to go towards the uh, 6th Avenue But I called the guy and he says he's not gonna be there. He told us You see and that's what they're doing if you park illegally They'll tow you away or maybe the guy broke down. I don't know but there's like signs everywhere. You'll be told. Oh yeah, we have to go across the river, right? No, we're going alongside the river. Oh yeah, then we go across, okay. But basically, University is west. West and slightly north, I think, of me. But the guy said he's not gonna be there. He'll be there at 8.30. And my ETA shows that as 817 so I can take it slow oh this is a uh, sixth this is not fourth Avenue this is a uh, sixth Use Avenue the right two lanes to turn slightly the wheels over here use the right two lanes to turn slightly right to stay on 6th Avenue Southwest uh, are we going here bow trail continue for one kilometer uh, I think so Sun is right behind me, which Use makes the right lane to turn slightly right onto the Crowchild Trail North Ramp, then which, slight right onto the Crowchild Trail North Ramp, which makes it hard to see, you know, what's in the mirrors. Slight right onto the Crowchild Trail North Ramp, then merge onto Crowchild Trail Southwest. Southwest? You mean north? I'm looking at the screen, it points me this way, but this is north. 
Crouch, Crouch Child North. Yeah, so now we're crossing the Bow River. So the downtown is behind me to the right. Taxi cab is all over the place, touching the line between the lanes, going left and right. Continue on Crowchild Trail Northwest for one kilometer. Must be on a cell phone. guy drives it's just if it was 8 p.m. I would say he's straight to stay on Crowchild Trail Northwest I would say he's drunk like this continue for two kilometers We are 1.2 kilometers away from my pickup. And time now is still too early. Normally dispatch says if you have to wait more than 10 minutes, mark it on the paperwork. But this guy on the pickup order, it says pick up after 8 30. so he did warn us that he won't be there before that time and i know this area i used to i bought a camera at that london drugs and that's a funny name london drugs but it's actually it's more like a walmart with a big uh, photography department you know all kinds of all kinds of goodies in there so it's a basically like a supermarket except I don't think they have food unless it's some kind of snacks or cookies you know that's but it's a nice store I find that the employees are pretty friendly and that's where, I, not this location, but I went to the different location uh, on uh, when on Saturday or Sunday to to get a le lens. And that's when they told me, no, you have a business account. We can only in 300 meters turn left onto Research Way Northwest. We can only give you the lands if you have a personal account like honestly I don't remember how I got in there I remember there was a couple of docks the guy said you'll see some docks turn left onto research way northwest then turn right
Oh yeah, okay, I think I remember. It's this structure over there behind the wall. Turn right, then you will arrive at your destination. Yeah, there'll be an entrance. And that's where they have Yeah, University of Calgary. You have arrived. Yeah, and that's where that's where I dropped it off last time. I just have to park somewhere here because they can kick me out like they're very like last time I, I stopped over there at near the security that's where I drop off that uh, that pellet jack and right away the guy the security guy jumped out are you gonna be here long I said two minutes but hopefully they don't kick me out. Or I can just go and park on the street and wait for this guy here. Anyway, so this is my second pickup and after this I'm just going back to, to our yard and see what else they have for me because I cannot drive that freight line over that red light, which means stop. Yeah, so after I grabbed that uh, pellet jack, I came uh, back to the yard and they gave me a pickup like and I look at the amount of stuff and it's it's a really a lot and I said this not gonna fit into the pickup truck and the dispatch says no you have to take a trailer so this was my first time uh, towing a trailer you know one of those pickup trailers so I hooked up the hitch to the back and I asked him to give me a helper or a swamper because it's just a lot of a lot of metal, you know. And so the guy helped me back towards the trailer. We hooked up all the <coughs> sorry, all the trays, all the cables, the security cable, you know, the one that if you lose the trailer, it applies the brakes, and then the electric cable because this trailer has its own electric brakes. So there was like a big plug that supplies uh, both the brakes and and the uh, electricity for the for the lights. And we went to the place where I was last week, that uh, church, and we put, picked up I don't know 20 frames, five by five, uh, 36 braces, 10 feet long, about 15 uh, 10 foot long decks. It was a lot of stuff like two of us it took us probably 30 minutes to load everything and then of course when we came here we had to unload but we asked some guys in the shop to help us oh yeah plus there were some half frames three by five there was uh, I think 22 of those it was it was crazy you know it was a crazy pickup and then by the time we finished uh, unloading and I dropped the trailer, parked the trailer behind the freight liner, which is now awaiting service appointment. It was already like 120, you know, 20 minutes past one. And, you know, I didn't have any lunch yet. So I went, I went to dispatch, gave them the paperwork and I said, okay, can I take my lunch now? They said, yeah. And so your lunch can be at any time, as long as you measure, you know, 30 minutes, right? So, and in my case, it started at uh, 126. So I came back at like 154, 155, so which was perfect. And they, they gave me this uh, very small delivery order. So I'm lucky that I had a big lunch I you know, just had some five uh, hamburger patties. Each patty is eight grams of protein, so that's 40 grams of protein. And plus I had two patties, just the patties, not the sandwich, but two patties uh, filet of fish Those are so tasty because they are slightly breaded. And technically I'm not supposed to eat bread, but it's just two 
two fillets and that was my lunch you know it was a lot of meat and so it was it was good that after lunch I didn't have to do too much work too much physical work so I only have two 5x5 five five frames two 10 foot long braces uh, two decks 10 foot long and four caster wheels and this is a relaxing trip because I have to drive 45 kilometers south like to the very end of Calgary um, the new new area that's being developed I think it's uh, even on the outside of uh, the ring road 201 highway 201 so I call the guy advise my ETA uh, double check the address because you know the same street can be southwest can be northeast can be uh, you know you know though that ending is important so I made sure that it was southwest and that's it now we're just relaxing driving the traffic is not too bad but it looks like this despite being uh, Easter Monday I see a lot of trucks like semi trucks so it looks like people are working well finally I started getting some traction with those my with my uh, uh, loads that I'm trying to move from Michigan to New Brunswick and and I forgot again about Quebec that uh, this time of year they have uh, frost laws and so people advise me that to do this load they would have to uh, pretty much do the entire trip on the US side because it loads in Michigan but delivers to New Brunswick which is just uh, next province after Quebec or Quebec right and so instead of going through Canada they have to go Michigan you know Ohio BA New York and then enter New Brunswick uh, from Maine or is it Vermont but anyway so it's more miles than when I counted uh, like to go straight from Michigan to New Brunswick it was like 1200 miles but this probably will be I don't know 13 1400 so I had a couple of guys reach out actually one guy has a pintle hitch and it says yeah I can do these what uh, any idea on the rate I said no that's what we're trying to figure out you give me a rate I'll take it back to the customer and uh, we'll know we'll go from there so now I'm supposed to get some emails and see that's why I like this job that I finish usually at four o'clock so of course four o'clock here it's already six o'clock in Michigan but still you know I can come home I can do some work Yeah, and I haven't heard anything from those uh, two jobs I applied for. So I guess for now we keep driving the Ford F-350, a Ram 3500 and Freightliner M2. Flatbed once. Once they fix that stop engine light, not check engine light, but stop engine light, honestly, I don't think I ever saw no maybe once on my Kenworth believe it or not once I had uh, of course it's always emissions I had uh, it's related to the emissions equipment uh, once I was somewhere in the eastern Canada somewhere like New Brunswick and I started having some error messages about my death and then there was a message saying that if I don't fix it soon then the engine will be derated to like five miles per hour and I think that's why I, I saw that I also saw like a red light that I'm supposed to stop 
but again it had nothing to do with the actual engine power fuel you know performance it it had to do with uh, uh, like the computer could not sense the proper level of emissions and so the emissions equipment basically the sensors uh, when I came back to Ontario they found that the sensors failed and they had to replace uh, like that uh, DEF tank has three sensors three in one place one is for the temperature one is for the level and one is for the quality so imagine like at any time anything can go wrong right you slightly you get slightly dirty uh, DEF or you know the level is too much or too low or something or it's too cold you get error messages but what helped me out in that case for some reason you know I decided I, I saw that I was um, like one quarter tank on DEF or half a tank so I went and I I topped up the tank and as soon as I topped it up all the error messages disappeared and I was able to uh, make my delivery in Eastern Canada and then come back to Ontario and then I gave the truck to the dealer because I was pretty sure that, that those error messages were recorded by the computer and that they would be able to see them even though they were no longer active codes and so yeah they they found them and they said yeah you got uh, two bad sensors in your dev tank so of course that cost me I forgot probably close to a thousand bucks and again that's another reason why here most people just delete all this emissions equipment because it all co it causes nothing but trouble especially in winter you know so that's my story and I stick to it yeah the guy who was helping me we started chatting and he said he just finished high school and I'm like holy moly you know like so he's probably I don't know 18 19 he lives with his parents he's just buying his first uh, new car like I'm listening to him I cannot believe this like he asked me how old I was because I guess he was not sure as <laughs> he says when, when were you born like holy moly do I look like I'm a hundred or something but you know he helped me load unload all these frames and, and decks but I was actually doing more work than him you know he was carrying uh, two braces and of course each brace is a bundle of two so he was carrying let's say four pipes two braces I was carrying six or three braces so I was carrying more and I put him in charge of the loading on the trailer since you know he's like a young kid and I need the exercise I need to lose some weight so I put him on the trailer so I was just bringing stuff from like 15 20 feet away and passing it to him and now he was uh, arranging it on the trailer so he had a slightly lighter job but he was helping me because this way I didn't have to raise all these decks and platforms to the you know almost to the shoulder level and drop them in the bed so yeah if I was by myself it would take me an hour for sure I don't know these guys had a crazy amount of uh, braces and frames and I even told the dispatcher said guys like on the paperwork it says I'm supposed to pick up uh, 20 5 by 5 frames I have 26 I was supposed to pick up 20 yellow braces which are 10 feet long 10 feet 4 inches long I picked up 26 or 36 or something but I mean it was a big discrepancy but in our favor so I'm guessing the customer maybe had them uh, uh, at another job because they looked like our our stuff but it just I was not supposed to pick up that much you know but what do you do there was no customer there we arrived at that gate the gate was closed I had to call a guy 
and when he, we had to go around the building where there's no gate it was a hassle but thankfully they left everything outside right next to the driveway and that's where we picked it up and took it to our What? I thought we were going all the way down. Imagine this kid was probably born, I don't know, 2002, 2001. So at that time, I was almost 40 years old. So I already finished high school, university. I went through the army service. I worked on the railroad for three years. And when I was 43, I got. I got my AZ or class one license. But yeah, in 2000 or 2002, I was not a trucker yet, but it's just, you know, half of my life was over when this guy was born. You know, it's, it's amazing. You know, if you think about it, so the, the, the years, fly by pretty fast and the older you get the faster they fly I remember when I was uh, 10 years old and my mom during New Year holiday she use says she says uh, in the in the summer we're gonna we're gonna go to the Black Sea. Continue for one kilometer. We're gonna go to a resort on the Black Sea, and we're gonna swim in the Black Sea. No, of course it's a salt water. Head south. Much easier Continue to swim. And I was so excited. I don't remember exactly if I was ten or nine, but I remember I was you know just a kid. But I remember she she told us this. You know like five six months before the fact and I remember I couldn't wait for those what is it like yeah five months to pass it, it seemed like an eternity <laughs> so now when I'm 62 like one year goes by like this like just in uh, August 31st I still remember I delivered my first my last load with a K Whopper Right? Then I parked the truck, I sold it, I went through US and I, I bought my apartment in Calgary in October 22. So now we're already in, in April 24. Like, how did these two years just go by, you know, so fast, you know? But I did have a Hellcat, right? I did buy an apartment. I did buy some guns and I started going to the public land shooting. I bought a couple of super expensive cameras that I later had to sell <laughs> because I ran out of money. <laughs> I worked for Uber Eats and DoorDash, made some happy, made, made some hungry people happy. You know, delivered some pizzas and some burgers. It, it's all good. It's all honest day's work. And now I'm driving a monster pickup truck with a with a diesel engine or I think it's more like diesel gas combo right I'm not sure if this if the engine on these is uh, like pure diesel so anyway a lot of things happened oh and I did a lot of hiking right I went to mountains quite a few times uh, in the spring and summer I did some hiking on, on those trails with my poles. I started running. I started losing weight. So yeah, I didn't, I think today I was at, uh, again at 187 or 188. 
like it doesn't want to it doesn't want to drop you know like before it was dropping pretty much like a pound a day and that's why i'm eating you know carnivore because that's a sure way to to lose weight at least in my case i know if i eat meat and fish only i start losing weight but last week i i i ate some cheese you know i found some cheese that had zero carbs because i have an allergy right um i cannot eat uh, cheese that has carbs because if it has carbs that means it has um, lactose because lactose is uh, sugar in milk and so a few years ago I, I discovered this little trick I thought I cannot eat any cheese because it was giving me headaches and then I discovered that old cheese by default does not have any carbs okay if it doesn't have carbs it doesn't have lactose so it's safe for me and so all i gotta do now is just all i gotta do now is just uh, read the sticker on the back and i got some uh, so i got some string cheese and because it's been a while since i ate eight since i had some cheese i thought i would have like two or three of those sticks i had 12 <laughs> 12 sticks i got up in the morning like holy mackerel what did i do uh, i went to, to look at the sticker how much calories was in one it says 60 six zero so just from one cheese so 60 times 13 that's 780 calories so definitely that's not how you lose weight right so boys and girls if you want to lose weight be super careful with two types of food number one cheese number two nuts nuts and seeds super high in calories even though they're good for you but in my case I was supposed to eat three maybe four like four would be 240 calories right but not 780 man so yeah trying to improve my health uh, didn't do anything today I decided to sleep till quarter to six and then just on the way to work I stopped at Starbucks got my decaf Americano recently for some reason I have hot time with uh, regular coffee I just see here we have some free coffee and the lunch room I just get like one third of a cup you know after lunch because it uh, feels good but for some reason I'm having issues if I drink you know like before I used to drink I don't know like a couple of big cups no issues anyway are we still in Alberta 9.6 kilometers oh man Look at this the water spilled on the side window now we have this weird picture here all right what else do you guys want to talk about oh check out a freight train now that's one thing I never got to do one of my childhood dreams was to be an engineer but at one point I discovered that these guys don't go far and that's exact that's what I was looking for but turns out these guys just go from one junction station to another like one district to another 
Yeah. I'm not sure how it works in Canada and US, but that's how it was in Russia. They go like, I don't know, 100 kilometers. And back in those days, in, in the, what was it, like USSR, right? The uh, freight trains were secondary to passenger trains, which I know here is the opposite. But back then, we had most most we had two types of passenger trains there were regular ones and fast trains like a fast train uh, had much less basically the difference was it had fewer stops let's say if it goes to Moscow and you need to you need to get off at a particular town you have to double check to make sure which train you need the regular one passenger train or fast passenger train Right, and so, especially fast passenger trains, they had a priority over over freight trains. Because I remember freight trains, they would sit somewhere for like two, three hours. You know, at the junction where, where like there's two lines and then there's one, right? So they were sitting there waiting, waiting for all the fast trains to come and pass. But here it's different, right? But that's what I did not like, and uh, of course another idea, another thing was that they discovered. Yeah, my my left eye from birth had 90% vision, and they did not allow that back in the day. So I couldn't become a pilot, and I was not allowed to become a railroad engineer. So those are the only two jobs that. You know, I dreamed about, but I did not get to perform. But I became a trucker, right? I worked on the railroad as a porter. So I still saw the railroad and I spent a year in the in the railroad uh, technical school. It was it was lots of fun. And I jumped with a parachute in the paratrooper when I was a paratrooper. So life was uh, interesting, you know, until now. So now we're driving a pickup truck with uh, some scaffolding. But at least I can see the mountains from here. I love Calgary. I love this part of Canada. So since now I'm getting a regular paycheck, I don't have to do that crazy DoorDash and Uber Eats anymore on weekends. So I can go, you know, pack my uh, hiking poles and maybe my guns and just go to the go to the public land do some shooting do do some hiking and I got a friend who lives in uh, Nisku Nisku Alberta which is a suburb of Edmonton actually I got two friends so one is a freight broker and the other one is a uh, also a trucker and but now he kind of like semi-retired because he used to do uh, fuel hauling and he keeps telling me that maybe I should try that you know like those huge fuel trucks but honestly I don't want to mess with that stuff because it's all carcinogenic it can cause cancer you know like because I was reading about this even when I was a trucker they were saying that you know, each time you fuel, right? I'm standing right next to the hose, pouring diesel fuel into the tank, and I read that you gotta stay away. You know, you, you, you don't wanna breathe those fumes, especially diesel. But gas is as bad as diesel, so it's all highly toxic, you know? You see, when you talk, time flies by really fast and actually that's why when I was a trucker quite often you know we would have our hands-free hands-free uh, hands-free uh, headset right and I would call a cup uh, some I had a couple of buddies that were also truckers and they were not we were not particularly close friends we were just kind of like you know talking friends because when I was back at home and he was back at home, we rarely, we rarely got together. 
but when you're driving you know like somewhere and you have to do 500 miles a day you know it really helps to be able to it really helps to be able to talk to someone you know and so I'd call a guy and and we had I think I also had uh, I had two phones I had the Verizon phone because quite often in the States it works much better than Canadian phones. And then I had a Canadian phone because you know I need one, it's cheaper when I'm in Canada. And so I know that this guy he had also two numbers, one American, one Canadian. So I would call one number. And this lazy guy, he never recorded, he never activated his voicemail. It was so frustrating, you know, he would just left his voicemail not set up and so if you call him and, he, and he's not answering you hear this annoying message saying that the customer you're calling has not set up their voicemail box please try a call later and so basically as soon as i saw as soon as i hear i'm calling him and if there's no answer after like three rings that's it i hang up i call his other number and then we you know we're just chatting for like hour two hours like oh where are you Oh, I'm on. I'm on uh, I-80 in Pennsylvania. Where are you? Oh, I'm just west of you. I'm in Iowa, just about to leave the world's biggest truck stop. Ah, cool. What are you hauling? Oh, I got some. He was uh, he was uh, uh, also doing some fuel. Then he switched to dry van. And then, and then he was uh, also watching my YouTube videos, and he got. In 200 meters, turn left onto Creekstone Heath Southwest. He wanted to try flatbed and step deck, and so he bought a step deck, and then they sent him to the port of Baltimore to pick up some equipment. And of course, it's all trade union; nobody's helping you, right? They just say, "Okay, your machine is over. Your machine is over there. Go load it." And so this poor guy calls me. And he says, Sergey, I'm at the port and they're telling me I'm supposed to load this machine by myself. What, nobody's gonna help me? <laughs> and I said, I told you many times, in the port, nobody's gonna help you. You have to learn how to operate that machine. I don't know what he was picking up, but probably some kind of a, because he had a step deck, probably some kind of a farm tractor. You know, that was a typical load for a step deck in Baltimore. Your destination is on the right all right so let's see so they have numbers in the top window uh, okay i think it's this one but there's there's a car in the driveway and the house looks finished i gotta make sure this is the proper i'm probably i'm gonna go and knock on the door because you know usually we drop off like I see over there I see a non-finished house and there's a tarp over the garage that's more like a place where I would drop off scaffolding but not like this so you know I gotta be a responsible proactive driver and go ask him yeah that's not the right address because I looked at the you know I punched punched exactly what was on my paperwork and it happens quite often it happens quite often in new com right communities path southwest, then turn left. so Google takes you to the street that has the same word in the front but the second word is different like in this case it's uh, Creekstone is the first word and the second one where where it took me it's creekstone path whereas i need creekstone hill turn uh, left toward creekstone square southwest then turn left onto creekstone square southwest turn left it wants me to go over there
yeah it's somewhere like three kilometers away see and it, just like in my area this is creek stone this is creek stone path this is creek stone square that's what they do i guess they don't have any image left onto creekside boulevard southwest then turn right onto 210th avenue southwest they have no imagination so they just use the first word and you see this is creekside boulevard <laughs> Yeah, so everything is Creekside except you have Boulevard, Path, Hill, Square. Uh, so I need Hill. Turn right onto 210th Avenue Southwest, then you will arrive at your destination. Well, we'll see about that. Somehow, I'm not quite positive that's that's the right one either. You're back online. Oh, really? And I came from here. If you remember, I was driving this way. And this son of a gun, Miss Google, is sleeping on the job. So this is supposed to be... You have arrived. Yes, this is supposed to be... Yeah, this is more like it. See, it's all construction. Creekstone Hill. All right, so now we just have to find the proper house yeah I see this is where I usually deliver like that house I can see with the Tyvek wrap around so now this should be the proper street all I gotta do now is just find the number which is usually in the top uh, store top story window and we'll go from there so now I'm in my car heading home uh, it's uh, 20 minutes to 5 so after that drop so yeah, now I'm in my, in my Jeep heading back home. So after that drop in the very south of Calgary, they send me 40 kilometers north to pretty much back to our yard, just, you know, west, maybe 10 minutes west. And so I picked up pretty much the same amount. It was a very small pickup, uh, two frames, two 10 foot decks and two 10 foot long uh, braces. And then I headed back home, so to speak, to the yard. And by the time I was there, it was already like 20 past five, so I did some overtime. And I unloaded, parked the truck, hang up the keys, gave the paperwork to dispatch, and asked them if it's okay to go home. They said, yeah, see you tomorrow. That's it. Got into my Jeep and see some, made a bit of extra money. But yeah, today was a bit difficult. That big uh, pickup with uh, multiple, multiple frames, you know, that one. But at least I had a helper or a swamper. So that was good, so. But yeah, surprisingly, I don't feel any pains. Like one guy was asking me, he says, uh, are you like, how do you feel? This is your second week. He says, when I started, my whole body was aching for a week. But, you know, I, I do, exercise with you know kettlebells and they really help i'm telling you if if i didn't do any strength exercises this would be difficult because even though it's like 50 pounds for one piece but it's you know you do you know six frames you know sometimes five decks and they're very awkward they're very awkward to carry you know like especially these decks i hate them you know 10 feet long and the way they shaped you cannot if you push them against your body it starts you know causing some pain because it has some sharp edges um, but yeah i figured out how to carry everything so now it's not that difficult i don't feel any any you know muscle pains so it's good i don't know Oh yeah, and, and so I also figured out why I couldn't buy that lens. You know, I called uh, as I was driving, uh, I called uh, this uh, financial company where I'm, suppo I'm supposedly, where I thought I had uh, a line of credit, like a small line of credit. And so I call them and I say, hey, um, 
I tried to buy that lens at uh, London Drugs and they told me my account is a business account and I have to change it to personal otherwise they cannot work with it and so this guy in customer service says uh, hold on let me check he says no actually that's not the issue that's not why that's not why your card or account did not work at London Drugs he says it's because your account your account is closed and I'm like wait what why do you guys keep sending me statements every month you know saying that I still have like twenty three hundred dollars in uh, in credit and I said why did you charge me twenty five dollars annual fee because it, it shows minus twenty five Car current balance of the account minus twenty five dollars and this guy says, uh, actually, no, minus 25 means that we owe you money. So basically, when uh, I, I use it once, I use this stupid financial account once when I think I bought uh, a lens back in Ontario and then I paid it off. And he says, uh, what happens is that when you paid off the loan, you, you gave us extra $25. And he says, minus 25 means it's a credit. It's not a debit. So he says, send us your banking information and we'll uh, send you this 25 bucks. Okay, so, you know, I wasn't able to buy uh, to buy the lands, but I found $25 sitting sitting all forgotten in, in, in these guys' uh, coffers, you know. And some guy emailed me his... You know, now it's uh, spring and the uh, photography business is kind of like reviving because I do advertise all the time that, you know, I'm a photographer in Calgary, so I can do portraits, you know, you name it, weddings. I'm especially good at funerals. And, uh, well, I don't have much experience with funerals, to be honest with you. But those customers, I think, would be, e would be, would be uh, easy to please. You know, you just need to know what car that your customer is at, you know, out of the procession. You know, first, second, third, and that's it. As, as long as you figure that out, you know, you know which car you have to focus your efforts on, I think it's a, it's a, it's a home run. <laughs> but anyway, this guy says, I need uh, uh, some real estate photography to take a uh, photo of a one bedroom apartment how much would you charge and he says i'm in northwest so i know that's northwest it's like 25 clicks away from me so i said 100 bucks and the guy disappeared then somebody else asking me uh, i need a female photographer for a uh, family banquet banquet you know like a party or something and I said, I'm sorry, it's just me. A sex change would be very expensive, so there's nothing I can do for you. You know? So <laughs> I swear to God, that's what I wrote. You know? I said, I, yeah, I could do a sex change, but that would not be worth the money. And then, okay, you do a sex change, you know, I turn into a woman. And then the next idiot customer says, oh, I need a male photographer for for a birthday party shoot. So then what? I have to spend another $10,000 to change back, you know, re, uh, reattach all the parts that they were cut off before. It's just, you know, not practical, you know what I mean? And so basically I'm getting offers on photography, but I'm guessing like in the first case, the guy did not like my price because it's only one bedroom apartment, but I don't care. You know, for me, it's not worth it to drive 25 kilometers one way and then 25 kilometers back. Uh, so that's my, that was my price, 100 bucks Canadian. That's $70 US. I think that's, that's uh, fair. And my camera is uh, $2,600. And of course I have a car. You need to have a car to get to this guy, right? And then the lens, 
I only have two lenses left. So the lens was uh, 1360 dollars. So 26 and 13, that's 4,000 dollars worth of equipment just to take a few photos of a one bedroom apartment. So, well, use your cell phone, right? If you don't want to pay hundred dollars. But this one with the sex change, yeah, that was a bit too much. Unless they want to cover all the expenses. So I don't know. So anyway, now I'm back home. Pretty much just need to do some shopping. And yeah, my GoPro died. That's why I switched to my cell phone, my iPhone. And so the plans for tonight are maybe to do some, I was supposed to do a full, you know, training thing with kettlebells, but honestly, it's once again, whenever I, if I don't do it in the morning, then after work, I don't feel like doing it because I already feel tired, you know, because it's, uh, there's a lot of physical activity at my job during the day. And so by the end of the day, you're thinking, what the heck, why the heck would I want to do it? If I already pretty much worked out all day, except of course, uh, uh, lower intensity, but pretty much constant, you know, loading, unloading, carrying, lifting, you know, dropping all these decks, frames. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just do a couple of, you know, kettlebell jerks and kettlebell snatches because those uh, exercise all your body. Maybe then take, take a shower, grab a dinner, do this video upload the video yeah sorry last week i i was a slacker i only did two videos but again i was waiting for for the flatbed so i can show you guys the flatbed it's it's really different from the pickup truck right and now as my luck would have it that flatbed probably is not going to be uh, ready to dr to be driven maybe for another week till they get the uh, that one in the shop and i hope it's nothing serious but that truck man it's so beat up you know they didn't they didn't take very good care of it so like everything is shaking you know check engine lights all over the place you know but the hydraulics surprisingly hydraulics works great i didn't see any leaks oil is you know oil level is the same all the time i didn't see any leaks under the engine and like the bed works you know the remote control works it's just that the truck itself is is uh you know beaten up um and then what else yeah so i haven't heard from my from my from those job applications Oh, and today, so I was, I got my first paycheck uh, last uh, Thursday. And today they gave me a all sealed top secret. Uh, oh, by the way, maybe I'll show you guys. Because you should know this in case somebody decides to quit their banking job and switch to a rental equipment delivery driver. You know, that, that would be an awesome career change especially if you're somewhere in my age group <laughs> now, honestly I don't know many people that after 60 would, would like to do this job but for some reason I don't care too much okay what is this so uh, looks like I worked uh, 56 hours and 4.75 hours were overtime. So $23 per hour for regular hours and 34.5 for overtime. So you see, great. So I got 4.7 overtime. And so I made, what was it? Uh, after tax, I made 1,400. Thirty-two dollars, one four three two, one four eight two. Sorry, my bad. That's after tax. So what I like about this job is that now I'm an employee. I don't have to worry about taxes anymore. You know, like set money aside. You know, keep track of expenses, right? Because when I'm an employee, there's no expenses. So whatever I'm paid, the tax is already taken at the source. So chances are I would get a refund during the next, um, when I'm filing next uh, income tax return, I'll get a refund because they always take more than they they should because there's always some deductions, right? 
so yeah that's what i got 14 1432 bucks you know not too bad but is if so basically i worked uh, 60 hours so wait a second so what what's the uh, period they paid me for uh, period start uh, March 8th period end March 22nd oh wow so yeah you see so it was a cut off on 22nd eight days before the end of the month and I was paid on on uh, Thursday which I think was like 29th or something right so that's how that's what I'm talking about when I say cut off so you know even though I kept working right but they need time to process everything and so otherwise they they would pay me from 8th of March until the you know last day in March 31st but that's not how no, that's not how they do things right and of course I did not work weekends so from 8 to 22 minus weekends so that's where, how I got uh, 56 regular hours and 4.75 overtime. See, so this is good. So not exactly, so especially in the summer, they're promising us uh, lots of overtime. And I said, count me in because I need the money. And that's how you can increase your, you know, earnings. So I don't know, so far I like it, it's a, bit of a crazy job but it works for me you know puts uh, puts uh, food on the table and beer in the fridge non-alcoholic beer in the fridge so it's all good oh and of course the other thing i'm gonna do tonight after i do the video i'm gonna play my accordion so now i finished that last piece that i showed you guys last time in the last video so now i gotta turn the page over and um do the notes i write them down and uh, start learning the another piece and they're all very short very easy to learn because that book is actually for kids who are learning how to play the accordion so i like it it's some guy asked me if, if uh, i want to sell the accordion no freaking way i'm not selling that one because i've been practicing for a very long time and i see that i'm making some progress so it really helps you know with the stress you know after work especially you know that those beautiful simple melodies are nice to hear and they're nice to to be able to you know to learn to play so anyway sorry for the short video see you later